Okay, so welcome to this next video in the playlist on rheumatoid arthritis. Okay, so in this video what we're going to talk about is the major histocompatibility complex. Okay, so we're going to talk about the uh, structures of the MHC class 1 and the MHC class 2, the major histocompatibility uh, complex class 1 and the major histocompatibility uh, complex class 2. Okay, uh, we're going to talk about the genetics of it because the genetics is highly uh, complicated. Okay, uh, and uh, we're going to talk about uh, this because um, there is a specific MHC uh, class 2 uh, that gives you increased susceptibility to um, developing rheumatoid arthritis. So to understand what this means, we need to have a study of the major histocompatibility complex. Okay, so we'll start off with the structure of MHC class 1 and MHC class 2. Uh, we will then talk about uh, the peptide binding groove for both of these two complexes. We'll talk about the MHC locus on chromosome 6, and we'll then talk about the way in which the uh, MHC complex is actually um, hold on to uh, fragments, basically, amino acid fragments. Okay, or peptide fragments. Right, and how they actually bind to them, and whether they're specific or not, and the concept of anchor residues. Okay, right. So, uh, let's begin then with the uh, structures of the MHC class 1 and the MHC class 2. Okay, so we'll start with the major histocompatibility complex class 1 molecule. Okay, so MHC class 1. So this is a protein complex that is on the surface of uh, all cells, all nucleated cells in your body. Okay, so let's put the phospholipid by there here. Okay, and now let's draw the two uh, proteins that are involved in MHC class 1. Okay, so there are two proteins that have to come together. So let me draw these. So the first is what's known as the beta protein. Okay, so I'll put this here. Oh, sorry, no, the alpha protein this is going to be. Okay, so here's the alpha protein. Okay, and we have the peptide binding groove up here. Okay, like so. Okay, so this is the alpha protein, okay, and it, it's the bigger of the two. The beta protein I'll then draw like this, okay, and it doesn't actually even span the membrane, it just sort of is attached to the alpha protein, okay, so this is what is known as the beta 2 microglobulin, this little portion down here. Okay, so basically an MHC class 1 uh, protein complex on the surface of a cell uh, basically consists of these two separate proteins and to highlight that they're two separate proteins I will highlight them in se separate colors so here is the beta 2 microglobulin in blue and then this other structure here is the alpha um, subunit okay and this is divided into these three separate domains okay so we call this domain here the alpha 1 domain we call this the alpha 2 domain here and this the alpha 3 domain okay and this alpha subunit here is the portion which actually spans the membrane so I'll highlight this in pink here right so this is the alpha subunit and it spans the membrane so you attach the alpha subunit to the beta 2 microglobulin and that gives you an MHC class 1 molecule and it is this portion here which is the peptide binding groove okay so remember the uh, function of MHC molecules is to present protein fragments on the surface uh, of the cell basically and you lie them in this little groove here so this is the peptide binding groove okay uh, and it can accommodate a uh, amino acid uh, fragment okay so a peptide fragment of around eight to nine amino acids okay so we'll discuss that in a moment again okay so little fragments of around eight to nine amino acids can uh, be accommodated there so if I draw a little peptide fragment here it'll be made up of either eight or nine fragments so that's four five six seven Eight, nine. There we go. So nine amino acids will make up the peptide fragments which can fit in the peptide binding groove of MHC class 1. Okay, right. And there'll be, this is a um, cross section if you like. So the peptide 
will actually be laid sort of like in coming out of the board in the axis coming out of the board and I'll draw a picture that will make that clearer in a moment after we've just discussed the structure of the major histocompatibility complex class 2 Okay, so MHC class 2 has a slightly different structure, okay? So it's more even than MHC class 1. MHC class 1 had this massive alpha subunit and then a small little beta 2 microglobulin subunit, whereas MHC class 2 has two subunits that are pretty much the same size. Okay, so here is, whoops, here is the alpha subunit of MHC uh, class uh, 2, okay? And now we have the beta subunit, and it's pretty much just the mirror image of it. Okay, so we have an alpha subunit and a beta subunit, and together they're pretty much identical, mirror images of one another. Okay, so let's colour in the beta subunit again in blue here. Okay, and again the beta subunit now can be divided into two separate domains. So the beta 1 domain up here, and the beta 2 domain here. Okay, and this is why this bit was called the beta-2 microglobulin, because effectively it's in the same position as the beta-2 domain of the beta subunit of MHC class 2. Okay, uh, so this whole thing then in blue is the beta subunit of MHC class 2. Okay, and then we also have the um, alpha subunit, which I'll cover now in, in pink. Okay, so in pink here, this is the alpha subunit of MHC class 2. And as we can see, it's pretty much the mirror image of the beta um, subunit. Okay, so this is known as the alpha 1 domain again here. And this is the alpha 2 domain. Okay, so the whole thing is then the alpha subunit. And again, this is the peptide binding groove here, where we will uh, present uh, fragments of peptides there. Okay, and this peptide binding groove here is uh, capable of having larger uh, peptide fragments put into it basically. It can accommodate peptide fragments which are between 13 and 25 amino acids. And by the way, when I stick alpha-alpha together like that, that's a shorthand for amino acid basically. It's a commonly used shorthand for amino acid. Okay, so uh, in the case of MHC class 2, it's the alpha-1 domain and the beta-1 domain which make up the peptide binding groove or the edges of the peptide binding groove. Whereas in MHC class 1, it's the alpha 1 and alpha 2 domains which make up uh, the uh, boundaries of the peptide binding groove. Now, why is MHC class 1 capable of only supporting much smaller fragments than MHC class 2? Well, if I draw another little picture to show this, basically, if we now draw a sort of cube here to represent the MHC class uh, 1, okay, so this is another representation, another little picture of our MHC class 1. Okay, so it's made up of these two separate proteins. So we have the beta 2 microglobulin, which is this portion down here. So let me highlight that in blue. Okay, so here in blue, this is the beta 2 microglobulin. Okay, and then the rest of it is all alpha subunits. So all of this is alpha subunits. So we have the alpha-1 portion up here, alpha-2 here, and then alpha-3 down here. Okay, so I'm just representing exactly this, but in a more 3D structure. Before, what we did is effectively we chopped down the centre here and looked at a cross-section of it. Okay, and now here is the peptide binding groove here. So it's a little sort of indentation, okay? So there's a little bit there, and the peptide's going to be put in there, okay? And the important thing to understand is that you've got these pockets at the end, basically, where uh, the carboxy terminus will bind and the amino terminus will bind. So if we've got our uh, peptide fragment here, then the peptide will have an amino terminus, okay, which we'll put over here, and it will also have a free carboxylic acid terminus. So here's the carboxy terminus. Okay, and basically there are pockets at either end where these two things have to bind in order for uh, the um, uh, peptide to be able to fit in, basically. So you can't put amino acids in uh, that are... Um, bigger, well, you can't, sorry, you can't put in peptide fragments which are bigger than eight to nine amino acids because it just won't fit in because we've got these 
edges here and basically the thing has to fit into that space and there are special binding pockets for the amino terminus and the uh, carboxy terminus at either side. Okay, so let me just draw the peptide fragment in there. So we'll colour in the peptide fragment in turquoise. Okay, and this thing is now going to sit in here. Okay, right. And pretty much you can only fit in one that's uh, eight to nine amino acids long. And the reason you can't fit in one that's shorter is because, as I say, uh, the amino terminus has to bind to a special uh, binding pocket on this side, and the carboxy terminus has to bind to a special binding pocket on that side. So there's not that much flexibility in what size peptides you can fit in there. So eight to nine amino acids um, long can be the um, fragments for MHC class one. Now for MHC class 2, if again we draw one of these cubes, okay, basically you don't have the um, boundaries at the edge that we had here, which means that you can go much longer, okay, and you also don't have the same sort of binding pockets as you had in this one, where the carboxy and um, amino terminus must bind, okay, so here are the, here's the, um, peptide binding groove now. So you see that the peptide binding groove of an MHC class 2 molecule is basically just open, okay? So uh, we have the alpha 1 subunit here, sorry, this is the alpha subunit here, sorry, and the beta subunit on this side. And then we have this open-ended peptide binding groove, which is why longer peptides can fit in here between 13 and 25 amino acids. And again, there aren't these important binding pockets where the amino and the carboxy terminus must bind. So basically, you have much bigger variability in what size fragments you can uh, bind to the uh, peptide binding groove of MHC class 2. Okay, so you can bind 13 to 20 25 amino acids in the peptide binding groove of MHC class 2. Okay, so that's now the structure of MHC class 2. In the next video, what we'll do is we'll turn our attention to the genetics of it. Okay, so where are the genes which code for these alpha and beta subunits of MHC class 1 and MHC class 2? Well, they are on the major histocompatibility complex, basically, which is a portion of DNA, a locus of DNA on chromosome 6. 